Hi there, hope you're well and welcome back to my channel. This video is the first video of the programming series for data analysis on my channel where I make tutorials and share tips and tricks for working in R and Python for data analysis. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the best practices for data analysis in R that I have learned in the past five years. So I'm very excited to share it with you today. Let me tell you something. After quite a few years using R, I realized that I made a very very, very bad mistake. And that mistake is that I didn't use R projects. You probably don't often see R projects introduced in R programming online courses and programming books, but this is such a shame because there are so many good reasons why R projects can make your workflow become much cleaner and smoother. And if you don't know what R project is, it's simply a working directory designated with an R project file. You can create a new R project in R Studio very easily by going to File, then New Project, and then you can create a new project with a given directory like so. The result is that you will have a project photo that looks like this, and this is where you put your analysis in. But okay, you might be asking, what's nice about using R project instead of just throwing your code and everything in a normal photo? Let me tell you the reasons why. Firstly, R projects negate the need for setting a working directory as everything becomes a relative path to the project photo. And that means you don't need to set an absolute path in your code and so you can share your project photo with anyone and they can still run it. I used to make a grave mistake by setting my absolute path in my code. And that is really, really bad because every time when I send it to my colleague or push it to um, a Git repo, my colleague would have to painstakingly change the path to make it work on his computer. And that leads to the second point, which is our projects improve both reproducibility and collaboration. Everyone can run your code given the R project photo without going through the hassle of setting a working directory. The project photo will always be the default working directory of your code within this photo. R project is also convenient because it has the option for version control with Git, so you don't need to initialize a Git repo for your project later on. The second tip that I have for you is to structure your analysis photo. It might seem a bit trivial if I talk about how you need to organize your project photo, but I promise you it's going to make your workflow become much more efficient. Let me show you a simple setup of my project photo. This is a template that could work for many different types of projects, but you can of course adapt it to your needs. So as you can see, I have a subfolder called data, and this is where I save all of the source files that I need to read into R in order to do my analysis or visualization. And here I have another subfolder called script. This is where I save all of my R scripts and R markdown files if I have any. And within this subfolder, I usually have one or more function files. I find it convenient to save all of the functions in a separate script from my main analysis script because it helps my main analysis script become shorter and cleaner. I just need to uh, read these functions into my, my analysis script instead of having um, them all together in one big script and it makes the code really messy and clunky. I also have a separate script for running the analysis. And if you have any R markdown file, you can also save it in this folder. And then I also have an output folder. And this is the folder where I save all of my outputs, including the plots and HTML and data exports. When you start working on more complex projects with many different scripts and different types of input and output files, this kind of structure will help you be organized and someone new in your team to make sense of the project. Project. This structure also separates your functions from the analysis run, the input from the output files, which is very useful when one day you want to create an R package from your code. Generally speaking, what you have set up as the subfolders don't matter too much, and as long as they are sensible. You may also decide to set up the subfolders so that they align with the analysis steps rather than the type of files. The third tip I have for you is about choosing which package to use. There are different libraries or 
ecosystems that you could use in R that offer different types of syntax for manipulating data. The three most common packages or ecosystems are base R, tidyverse, and data table. If you don't know what to use, let me spoil you a bit here. I use data table probably 95% of the time, mainly because of the concise syntax and its unbeatable speed when it comes to processing big data sets. Let's make a little comparison of these packages to give you an overview. Here you can see a summary of the key functions in each library, so base R, tidyverse, and data table. You can see that the syntax looks a little bit different, especially tidyverse is way more verbose than the other two. And data table has this typical syntax for data manipulation. Each of these ecosystems have their pros and cons. For example, base R is very stable, it's available in most R installations, however it can be very slow and its syntax can be a bit clunky. Tidyverse uses natural verbs to describe functions and it's usually faster than base and it's very abundant in online resources. However, its verbose syntax can make for very lengthy scripts and it may not be intuitive for beginners. And it has a lot of dependencies. That means that you would have to install extra packages in order to use Tidyverse. And it is slower than data table. Now, data table is very concise in its syntax, unlike tidyverse, it's very fast and memory efficient, and it has no dependencies uh, except for base R. However, its concise syntax can be a bit hard to read and hard to understand. I'll make an in-depth tutorial in a future video to show you how to do data wrangling really fast and efficient with data table. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe to my channel. But I think the bottom line is, no matter what library and syntax you adopt, it's a good practice to stick to one of them in one script so that it makes it easier for others to understand your code. One of the most important things to learn in programming is to learn how to debug your code. We humans are not perfect and we make mistakes. What I really regret not using from early on is the debugger tool in RStudio. In early days, I just manually went into each function and manually print out the output in each step. There's nothing wrong with that, but it gets confusing quite quickly and it takes a lot of time and effort. I prepared here a small example to illustrate how you can use the debugger to inspect your code very, very easily. Okay, here I have a little script that will produce an error if I try to run it. And here you can see this is the error. And the problem is we want to see where this error comes from. Uh, because here we have two functions. Uh, the function sum i is calling the function rounding number to see the call stack of the script, you can run the traceback function, which will return uh, the functions and the order in which it was called. And you can see here, the semi function is called first, and then we have the rounding number function. Now let's try to debug this code, and let's see if we can find where the error is. The easiest way to debug the code is to set breakpoints. In RStudio, you can set breakpoints very easily by clicking to the left of the row numbers, and then we can run the script by clicking on source, and now we are in the browser mode. So you can see here, the green arrow, which is the pointer, is uh, pointing at the row number 12. And this is where we have set the breakpoints earlier. Since we are in the browser mode, we have a few options. The first option is to continue to execute the next line of code. So if we uh, type N, then the current line of code, which is line 12, will be executed and uh, the pointer will be pointed to the next line of code. Now we're at the row 13, where we um, declare the variable result is equal to um, base the total is with the variable total. If we continue to execute this line, then we can actually now inspect the variable result and to see what the value it has and hopefully we can find um, where the error comes from. And now if we print out the result variable, it says total is 15, which makes sense because um, total is equal to the sum of 1 to 5, which is 15. And now we are at the line 14, where we are trying to round the result variable. And here we can actually step into the round number function by typing S and press enter. And now we are at the round number function. We are at the line 5. And if we try to execute it, we will get an error. 
because we know that the result variable is actually a string and we, here we are trying to round up a string which is not possible. So with this example, you can see that it is very easy to debug the code using the debugger tool in RStudio instead of printing out manually x variable in x steps and x function, which is very, very difficult sometimes. I hope you find these tips helpful and let me know in the comment section below what other tips you have or if there's anything you're still struggling with. In the coming video, I will talk about preparing for an interview for a data analyst job. Since many of you requested me to do this video, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, be sure to do so. There will be many videos coming to help you level up your skills or to get into the data analytics field. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.